with you, Kadiani. Uh, brother's eating. Uh, we don't want to disturb him. Maybe uh, we let him be. It's very bad now. So yeah, you're on about the persecution of uh, Ahmadis, especially in Pakistan. I think it was 1974, I think they were declared as non-Muslims. And how did that affect the community, especially, you know, the Qadiyani community? So, with Ahmadiyya, we were being packed, like our businesses, our houses, our mothers, our children, uh, fathers, so on, were being packed. Uh, the mosques were being packed. The Qurans were being burned, the graves were being dug down, and uh, just things that were going like extremists just took over Pakistan. You know? And uh, the, then what they did was they also uh, said the Khalifa cannot have his own mosque, he cannot pray in the mosque, he cannot do the sword. So the Khalifa was in Pakistan at that particular he was time? At time yeah, yeah. And where is he now? He's, uh, he came to the UK. He migrated to, a, to the UK. Where? In London or? No, uh, outside of London. Where? Outside of London. I don't, I don't know where he is. I don't know. So Actually, yeah. he started his Khalifa and he's ruling there. So as a Khalifa, I'm assuming he has the ability to give out strict instructions to you know the, the, to his people, right? And give out judgments and stuff. I find it a bit strange that as a Khalifa, I mean, if he's a Khalifa of you know Ahmadiyya and you call yourself Muslim, how come he hasn't sent like uh, some type of force or some type of army to help the brothers and sisters in Palestine and in Gaza? As he, what has he said regarding that? So, regarding Palestine, what we have is we have a Jamia. The Jamia is a uh, a body where. Like a madrasa, you know, like where it has be, it has young children or kids or teenagers who devote themselves on the basis of Islam. So their whole life, well, they will be work. They will be uh, someone that will give their life to Allah. So we have a jamia which established and which is spread all over the world, which is teaching. The Christian. The no, did you understand the question? I asked no, I, I'm saying. I'm okay. Yeah. So, with this jamia, there are also marabiyans. There are also mosques. So, wherever they are established, we go out and we go and tell our community that the Messiah has come and we should live in peace. Because this is one. This is another way that Hazrat uh, Masrur Ahmad, the fifth Khalifa. He is spreading his teaching to all nations. So, if you see in the Palestine, if you see in Kabbir, uh, there are Ahmadi mosques there. And those Ahmadi mosques are, tell, are telling the Muslim people, look, come towards the Messiah. But they're already Muslims. Come towards Islam. But they're already Muslims. So what's the point of calling them? Because they're already Muslims. But the thing is, are they Muslims or not Muslims? They're Muslims. Are the, are the party who don't believe in Mirza Ghulam, are they Kuffar or are they Muslims? They are Muslims. So then what's the point of believing? There's no point then. Are we, going, are we going paradise? No, because... We're not going paradise. Because this is what they need. No, I'm asking you, yeah. are they going paradise? It's up to Allah. So the possibility that I you... Mean, even I don't know if I'm going paradise. I got you. There's a possibility that I don't have to believe in Mirza Ghulam to be a prophet or the second coming of Jesus or the second coming of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him sallallahu alaihi wasallam there will still be opportunity for me to or a chance for me to still enter paradise yes he still can uh, enter paradise you, so, so what's the point of me accepting him as a prophet or a messenger then? because when we accept the Messiah then we accept Islam but we, as a Muslim you already accept Islam but we as a Muslim we also do things that go against Islam. Even, even like, let me give an example. One. Like how we say that we have the right to go and attack someone and break down mosques or go and burn the Quran just because he's an Amity. This is not Islamic teaching. Even the word jihad. Jihad means to strive. You can strive through your inner self. 
You can strive uh, through helping someone, giving charity. You know, what about the other aspect of jihad? Having a, a physical interaction with somebody is not classified as as your prophet said that that doesn't exist anymore at the moment yes it does not exist so if somebody is oppressing the muslims you're not allowed to fight against the oppressor at the moment the way uh, he has taught as a muslim the messiah the islam the way he has taught us to fight is through the pen meaning give them knowledge give them the teaching be peaceful so for me, Brother Muhammad, it just doesn't really make any sense. It really doesn't because he's, if he's bringing another Sharia, the the Prophet, your your Mirza Ghalam, if he's bringing another Sharia, another ruling, then in in reality, what we're saying, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, never really completed the task. And we know in the Quran it says that today I have completed your uh, religion and I've chosen Islam as a way of life. And now you're saying Mirza Ghulam has added something else to that now and nullifying aspects of jihad. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what we say is that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed has... When you say we, who do you mean Islam we? As Ahmadiyya Muslims. Okay. Islam no, no, Ahmadiyya. where is that information coming from? Are you say Mirza Ghulam is saying that? Say that then. Say that. Say Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is saying that jihad now is not valid so, anymore. Hazard, it's invalid. Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is saying do jihad, but with the pen. But with the pen. No fighting. No fighting. No physical interaction. No physical interaction. So the people in Pal said, so the people in Palestine right now, they shouldn't really resist the genocide that is taking place. They should just say. There should be a peace agreement. But there is no the two nations. But there is no peace. People have tried. If if not, then then uh, then what? Except the Messiah. If not, <laughs> but if not, Muhammad. If not, do you understand Messiah, what he's saying, Muhammad? If not, except the Messiah, then uh, reform your inner selves. If not, then pray to God. But they're all going to get pray to martyred. Uh, they're all going to die. No, I will say pray so to God. So how they're going to... Make war. Make they, war. They, you, you don't want them to fight back. Yeah. So they're all going to die. So what's the benefit of all that then? As I said, they can pray. But they're all going to get massacred. They're being genocided right now. They should also stand up for themselves. You're saying the, uh, stand up for themselves and, and uh, told told people, look, you have been oppressed. I think that people know they're being oppressed. Yeah. So what can Muhammad. we do? Then? What, 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 what do you want? What, what You're saying they can't fight back. Physically, no. So what are they supposed to do then? If they try fighting back physically, they're going to get destroyed even more. <laughs> they think that more people are being thrown out. Wait a minute. Nearly a year now since the the genocide has started, or actually longer, if you want to put it throughout the decades but since October the 7th where the, the you know the, the mass killing has started they have been fighting back even abandoning their uh, brands or their companies you know this is another way that you can protest Muhammad I can't oh, you know. governments, write to governments so you don't want write letters so you don't want the Palestinian your Mirza Ghulam would be quite happy and your Khalifa is actually quite happy for the massacre of all the Muslims. So the Khalifa... No, no, the Khalifa is happy with that, yeah? Let, let me tell you, uh, the Khalifa, every every Friday ceremony that he does, he is saying, pray for the people of Palestine. Yeah. But, and that's he's all saying, he's doing. He's not yes. sending an army, he's not sending any medical help or like uh, there intervention. Is a, there is a charity that's established there, which is called Humanity First. Humanity First is the forefront of helping the people of Palestine. They give them water, they're giving them necessaries, they're giving them uh, uh, everyday usage, uh, you know. So, we have charities there, we have people helping. I understand you've got charities there, and that's all well and good, but in reality, the, your Khalifa and your Prophet has mentioned that jihad has been nullified, so you're not allowed to fight back anymore. So, I don't see the aspect of that. You know, jihad. If somebody enters your house and tries to physically uh, take your belongings away or try to harm you and your family, 
to defend yourself the type of jihad, right? So you would be quite happy to somebody to get into your house, take everything, abuse your family, and you'll just sit in the corner making dua. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Then, then what would you do then? What, 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 what can we do? Wouldn't you fight back? Physically? Yeah, physically. This is what I say. First get guidance from the Khalifa. When the so, Khalifa, okay. But, so what you're saying now, yeah. Brother Muhammad, you, you understand what you're saying? Now you, I should pick up the phone, find up the Khalifa, say Khalifa Pai, uh, or Saab. No, you can write a letter. Right, okay. But by that time, the people are already come in the house and took everything. Okay, this is why. So you're on about. This is why we have we have our mosque that is established in Palestine, Abu Dhabi. So, so if if the if the if the person has taken that 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 is uh, uh, who's who's the imam or that's the one who's leading the who's the owner or who's protecting the mosque, he can he can right contact right the the Khalifa. And he can ask but, but, that, but that's actually happening in real time where your house is being broken into and your family is being harmed. So I, in reality, as a Qadiani, you are not allowed to fight back until you get a notification from uh, your Khalifa. Even at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they never fought until Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave them the uh, rights. But then they were given rights and they started fighting. Yes, so you're saying now the Prophet gave rights, but your Khalifa is taking it away from now. No. What I'm trying to say you just is, said, you just, you're just laughing because you know it's is, true. What I'm trying to say is, every time when Islam was asked to attack, it was always first given permission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and okay. Muhammad. My camera is over there. One second, brother. Jazakallah.